Well, everybody, the Republican National Convention still underway in Milwaukee as former President Donald Trump is set to make a speech accepting his presidential nomination. It's his first speech since the attempted assassination. Yes. Alex Mich Michelson is there live. All right, good morning, Alex. What do we expect for today? Good morning, Mel and Jen. Thanks so much. Uh, joining us now live from here at the Republican National Convention is Kevin McCarthy, the former Speaker of the House, proud son of Bakersfield. Good to have California in the House. Good to see you. Um, so they were just asking, what should we expect for tonight? You know him well. What are you expecting for tonight? I think you're going to see a more uniting speech from President Trump. I mean, I, I talked to him the day after the assassination attempt, and he would tell me about hearing the bullet. He knows um, he is very fortunate to still be on this earth right now, and I think he has a more reflective view. If you've watched him night after night sitting here, I've never seen him do that, would sit through, listen to all of them. Um, the number of times he talks about uniting the nation, and I think it's, it's a place that if you're not a person who supports Trump, take a moment and come to listen. See if there's something different that maybe you could. And you think about it, that's also a pretty smart political strategy because most of the folks that love all the red meat stuff, they're already with them. They're diehards. They got the ear bandages on out here. I mean, do you think, talk about the political strategy of that. Well, the difference is, I, I don't, and, and to be fair, I don't see him using for political because um, I see the way he looked at his granddaughter last night, right? And the first night walking out here, the emotion that he feels that he doesn't see it. It almost as though Joe Biden has used it to a point. He's, Joe Biden's only given three Oval Office's addresses, and this, he used this as one to try to set the tide. Th there had been no more Democrats coming out to ask him to remove until Adam Schiff came out. But I think that's more Nancy Pelosi than Adam. Well, let's talk about that right now. Nancy Pelosi, somebody that you know so well, um, so close with Adam Schiff. She says that she didn't know that that was going to happen from Adam Schiff, although nobody really believes that. Uh, what do you think is going on behind the scenes with the Democrats right now? And do you think Joe Biden survives this? You know, I always believe Joe Biden survived. For the first time yesterday, I think there's a, a possibility of a crack. Before he said it was God Almighty that have to for him to remove, because he has all the power. He literally has to say, he, Joe Biden, that he doesn't want on. Um, Nancy Pelosi knows exactly what she's doing. If you watched, even though he said he was going to stay in, she came on TV to a station that he watches and says he needs to make up his mind. Well, he already made up his mind. The, the, Hakeem is not a strong leader. Schumer's not strong. Pelosi is. And she's working with Obama behind the scenes. You had George Clooney come out. Remember, you had Carville come a year ago. You, you've had all these people to try to push him out. And now they're doing a full court press because time is of the essence. But what's interesting is if you push him out and you're worried about democracy on the ballot, is it democracy by pushing out the people of your party selected? Mm. I mean, this decision should have been made a year ago. This, the, the Democratic Party literally changed their primary system so others couldn't run. They made South Carolina the number one state, the first state. They, they changed it, made it more difficult for people to challenge them. Maybe if you had challenged them a year ago, you wouldn't have this question. You'd have a different nominee. And the other thing they did, they didn't allow debates in the primary. No. And so that performance that we saw against Trump, we may have seen on debate stage earlier, which may have changed the way people would have voted in the primary. So if it is not Biden, who do you think would be the toughest Democrat to run against? I'm not sure. I mean, to be fair, I've been to five of these conventions, the last five. I've never seen Republicans more united. And personally, I've never seen the Democrats more divided. Mm -hmm. We're, what, uh, less than 120 days out, and you don't know whether you want your nominee or not. You've got members of the Democratic Party in Congress who are clinging to President Trump, trying to help them to survive. I've seen districts that Biden has won that now Trump is carrying. So it's a whole different world in politics, but that's still quite a long time before you go. And I'm not sure how they go about selecting. You go let a few people select who the nominee is. I think there'll still be disgruntlement in the Democratic Party. So in one word, how are you feeling after this week? I'm more confident than I've ever been walking in. But I still know there's a long way away um, and a lot of things can happen because I think in the last month, a lot has happened. I mean, it's extraordinary what's happened in the last month, one of the craziest months in the history of American politics. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, former House Speaker, proud son of California. Great to see you. Thank you so much for the perspective. Really appreciate it. And have, have fun tonight. Oh, thank you. Uh, so we will have live coverage of that speech for President Trump right here on Fox 11 tonight from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Jen and Mel, back to you. Oh, I'll be watching that. Yes. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Great Alex. interview and, and excellent coverage from the RNC. We appreciate, appreciate you it. very much.